Hmm. A bright spring day in Dublin and it was just like this in 1882. Uh, warm, uh, some people were seen to be sunburnt. It was a Saturday, it was around 7 p.m. Two men were walking in the Phoenix Park. Frederick Cavendish, the newly arrived Chief Secretary, who'd only been in the country a few hours, and Thomas Henry Burke, who was the Chief of the Civil Service in Ireland. And he was a man regarded by many as the leading castle rat in the uh, British administration in Ireland, which was operating with the assistance of Irish traitors, as some saw it. They walked along, and as they did so, the various sporting matches began to draw to a close and they were passed by a cab. Uh, the people who were on that vehicle climbed out and began to walk back down towards um, the two men who were making their way towards the Phoenix. And this quartet of ruffians passed them and then suddenly whirled about and attacked the two men. This was to be a political assassination. The four were members of a new group styling itself the Irish National Invincibles. From under their coats they produced long surgical knives and first knifed Thomas Henry Burke in the back then turned their attentions to Lord Frederick Cavendish who himself raised his umbrella in useless uh, self-defence and thrashed about as the blows rained in from the four men. Soon Thomas Henry Burke was lying gasping his last on the path opposite me on the far side of the road while Lord Frederick Cavendish had staggered into the centre of the dusty road where he too fell as the four men ran away. The uh, scene was witnessed from behind me by the head of security here at the uh, Vice Regal Lodge, but he put it down to no more than, uh, than drunken rowdyism amongst the Irish, for which they were famed, particularly on a Saturday night. Uh, however, he sent out members of the picket uh, to, to make sure that all such troublemaking was quelled before the arrival of the VIPs. It took some time to establish that the two men lying dead were indeed uh, the VIPs they had been expecting. Meanwhile, the four assassins had climbed back onto a cab driven by a man called Fitzharris, who has passed into Dublin lore and legend as Skin the Goat. They made their way uh, uh, away from this park, uh, out through the Chapel Lizard Gate and towards the South City. The authorities in the gathering dusk were left with nothing but the corpses of the two men and no forensic clues. How were they going to solve this crime? Well, they got an early one later on that night when cards were dropped into the offices of the Freeman's Journal and other newspapers claiming that this deed was done by the Irish Invincibles. Uh, immediately, uh, there was a huge security alert. All the trains were stopped. Um, the word was telegraphed around the country and the ports uh, were sealed and anyone seeking to embark on a vessel uh, stood to face close questioning and it was some time before a means could be found to crack this case. In the end, it involved the turning of a man called James Kerry, who was a Dublin City Councillor at the time, a man who today might be considered the equivalent of a cabinet minister, such was his importance in the life uh, of the city. And Kerry cracked under interrogation and named some of his accomplices. He had not done the deed himself, but he had been present in the park when the assassinations took place. A number of men were rounded up after intense interrogation and possibly even torture, they began denouncing others and a succession of hangings eventually took place. But there was one more matter at hand and that was the state's evidence that had been turned by James Carey who became the first man taken into a witness protection program anywhere in the world. He was spirited away to London, he was given a new identity, so too were her, his family who were eventually reunited with him and they were put on board a ship bound for South Africa initially and then to a new life in Australia. However, um, Kerry was recognised on board by uh, an Irish nationalist who produced a pistol and just before landfall in Port Elizabeth shot James Kerry dead, causing bonfires to be lit all over Dublin in celebration when the news eventually filtered through.